So last video we were talking about the anatomy of long bones, so we'll just continue here with that. So long bones have multiple layers to them. The outermost layer is going to be called the periosteum. Peri means outside, osteo means bone, so this is outside of the bone. You can see that here on this bottom picture. The inner layer is called the endosteum, and this is the inside. The periosteum is split into two different layers. There's the fibrous layer, which is going to be the strong layer on the outside that's protecting the bone. This is where all your tendons and ligaments attach. The cellular layer um, is the part that actually has all the cells that are um, turning into bones. So osteoblasts are building bone, osteoclasts are destroying bone. And then osteoprogenitor cells are kind of like stem cells. Perforating fibers or sharpie fibers are just holding the two layers together. The endosteum on the inside is surrounding the innermost medullary cavity here. This is full of cells, same as the cellular layer of the periosteum. Perforating or sharpie fibers are these little white lines that you can see here. Um, these basically are holding the periosteum to the rest of the bone. They can also help to anchor the ligaments or tendons to the bones. Here we have a picture, just um, all those things that we went through previously you can see here. So bones are highly vascular. There's a lot of blood supply, especially in spongy bone. Blood vessels go through the periosteum through some little holes called nutrient foramina, and then they go into what's called a central canal that I'll go through in a few minutes. The nerves also um, are found prominently in the long bones. They also pass through those nutrient foramina, and they go into the central canals. The nerves are basically just signaling if there's any type of injury to the bone. These are the different bone cells. We'll go through each of them. So osteoprogenitor cells, like I said, are stem cells. They're derived from the mesenchyme, um, which is a part during field development. You can find these in the endosteum, periosteum. And what happens is one osteoprogenitor divides into two cells. It makes one identical copy of itself, which is another osteoprogenitor cell and it makes one osteoblast that is ready to build bone. Osteoblasts are building bone. Um, they act to calcify the bone. So once they calcify the region around themselves, they get trapped in that space because they've now made the bone hard. Once they are trapped, we call them osteocytes. Osteocytes are these little cells that are just maintaining the matrix. So you can see here this is an osteocyte, here is another, and they're connected by these little finger-like projections called canaliculi. And then there are little gap junctions within there so they can directly exchange information, nutrients, and waste. So these cells basically function to sense how much the bone is being strained. Um, if the bones are being used a lot, like if you're training for a marathon, they will trigger the osteoblast to start depositing more bone. If you are a couch potato and you're just laying around a lot, they will signal the osteoclast to start reabsorbing the bone. So osteoclasts are destroying bone. So clasts mean dissolve. So they sit in these little regions called resorption bays. You might also hear them called Howship's lacunae. Um, in these resorption bays what they do is they dissolve the bone in this little region. So the way that they do that is that they release hydrogen ions into the extracellular fluid in that resorption bay. Hydrogen ions mean that 
we are getting a more acidic environment, so hydrochloric acid, and that is going to dissolve the bones. Osteoclasts also secrete something called acid phosphatase. So this enzyme needs an acidic environment to work in. And anytime you see ACE at the end of something, that means it's going to be a proto proteolytic enzyme. So acid phosphatase acts to um, digest the collagen. If the osteoclasts are signaled to work more, they start dissolving more bone. And when they dissolve bone, that releases calcium into the blood. So if you don't have enough diet, dietary calcium, your bones get dissolved so that you end up with enough calcium in your blood. Like I said previously, calcium is really important for lots of things, including muscle and nervous um, system functionings. So if you don't have enough calcium, that can be kind of a life-threatening matter. So this is a really useful way to protect our skeletal and muscular systems. But the problem is if you don't have enough dietary calcium for long amounts of time, like years on end, then you're dissolving a lot of bone. This is how people end up with like osteoporosis. This is why they tell you to drink a lot of milk when you're a kid. Here's another picture. These are the osteoprogenitor cells making some osteoblasts. Once they get, once they get trapped, they're called osteocytes with the little canaliculi. Over here we have the osteocytes in that resorption bay. Sorry, osteoclasts in this resorption bay. So the bone matrix is made out of two different components. There's the organic component and the inorganic component. The organic component is mainly collagen, and this is what gives bones their flexibility. The inorganic component is the part that's giving bones their strength from these crystals that form called hydroxyapatite. So this crystal is calcium phosphate and calcium hydroxide. There are other salts and ions, um, but mainly these are the ones I'd like you to know. Um, and this is what gives bones their strength. So what would happen to bones without calcium? Well, we know calcium gives them their strength. So if we don't have any calcium, they would bend easily. What would happen to bones without collagen? Well, we know collagen gives them their flexibility. So if we don't have any flexibility, they shatter easily. So this is pathological. This is what we call rickets or osteomalacia. And then on the right, this is what we call osteogenesis imperfecta or brittle bone disease. So the process of bone formation is called mineralization, calcification, ossification, um, lots of different terms. So we'll go through the steps here. So first thing that happens, the osteoblasts secrete the osteoid, which like we said before, is the organic component of collagen that's flexible. So this flexible component is secreted first, and then it is calcified via these hydroxyapatite crystals that we said are the inorganic component that give bones their strength. So we harden the bone, um, and the concentration of the calcium and ions, phosphate ions in the blood, eventually precipitate into the osteoid, and then that leads to hardening via calcification. So it's kind of like if you're trying to dissolve sugar in water, you can put a few teaspoons and it dissolves right away. If you add three cups of sugar to just a little bit of water, it's not going to dissolve. It'll precipitate. So same thing if you have too much calcium and phosphate in the blood, they precipitate into the bone and then they harden. There are a bunch of different requirements to have calcification occur, and we'll go through each of those later. Bone also gets resorbed, so if we don't have enough calcium in the blood, we need to dissolve some of our bone in order to use that calcium. 
So the osteoclasts are the ones that secrete hydrogen ions and acid phosphatase to dissolve bone and release calcium. So when blood calcium is low, osteoclasts secrete the enzymes, hydrochloric acid dissolve the bone, and then this releases calcium and phosphate into the blood to be used by the nervous and muscular systems primarily. Two types of bone. So spongy bone is pictured here, looks like a sponge. This is going to be found in the heads of all the long bones, so the ends, the diaphysis. And it is always covered by compact bone. We don't want this on the outside. It is not as strong as compact bone, and we would end up with a lot more fractures if this was sitting on the outside. Compact bone is here. It looks a little more solid. Um, there are little holes in the centers. We'll go through those, um, but that's where the blood vessels and the nerves are running. And compact bone you find on the surface of all bones. So compact bone is always lining this, lining the outside, outside of the spongy bone. So this I will pick up on the next video.